your winner for the night, Mr. Gay World South Africa is Lo Bradenburg! Congratulations! Um, I'm Lo Breitenbach. I am 32 years old and I come from Johannesburg, South Africa. I think I am definitely a lover of life. I'm very passionate in everything I do and um, integrity is very important to me. I am um, more, not so much the walking and the posing, but I think what it stands for at a deeper level where, um, you know, the charity work I get to do and the organizations that I get to be a part of. And I think that is what fuels the passion at the end of the day is the fact that, you know, you can make a difference on a national or even a global scale. For me, the charity is more important. Absolutely. My dad once told me that um, every time you are faced with hardship, you have to remember what lies beyond that hardship. So I always remind myself that you can't get to the rainbow without a little bit of rain. And I always try and remind myself of that whenever there's hardship, what is going to be after that hardship, what is lying ahead of it. Yeah, so it took a long time. My dad is a pastor, so we come from a very religious background. I myself studied theology, so I'm also very religious. So it was a big struggle and it took a long time, but um, I came out at the age of 21. And um, after a couple of years, I think when they saw, um, you know, that I'm so respectful, my lifestyle is just as honorable, there's nothing weird or funny about it, it's just who I am, it's who I've always been. And, um, and I think when they realized that, and the more they got educated and um, realized what it means to be gay or to be part of the LGBTQ uh, plus community, um, that's where they, they started changing their attitude towards it and going, oh, but actually it's just who they are and it's okay and we can love them for that. It's just um, what makes them unique. Yeah, they are my biggest fans. It's actually quite surprising <laughs> because, you know, when I was 21, it was on this war path to, um, to uh, get me to live a different lifestyle and they didn't support anything and it's wonderful how education and um, the more educated they became with queer issues their entire mind shift changed and at this stage they're rooting for me they're attending the events um, they're even coming this year um, to our pride event it will be their first pride ever but they are coming uh, to support uh, people whose parents don't support them. And they said they'll um, stand in for them. So yeah, I'm very excited because our pride event is on the 4th of December and then my parents will be attending their first pride. <laughs> A secret talent. <laughs> I don't say this to a lot of people, but my little party trick is that I make poetry on the spot. So if someone gives me a word, I can write a poem. And I love writing poetry, but I don't tell a lot of people that I can write. <laughs> So, no, we don't have a um, talent section in this Mr. Gay World edition. Um, I don't know the previous years, but uh, this year, because of the virtual event, we don't have a talent section.
I think I'm grateful that we grew up, um, you know, very poor. It, uh, it made me very humble in life. It made, showed me that you don't need all the materialistic things to be happy because the one thing that there always was in our house is there was always love. Um, and I've learned that you can overcome a lot with love. And so I'm grateful for the way I grew up. I didn't have the best of everything. I didn't have um, the latest of everything, but I had love. And that sometimes is more important than the material stuff. No, I don't. I'm single. <laughs> The message is pass. <laughs> Maybe a, a, a lot of supporters, a lot of fans send you a, a love message. I hope so. <laughs> Maybe I'll find the one. <laughs> I think what um, makes my day special is I get to work with children. So I have a theater school. That is my day-to-day uh, -day job. And I think what makes my day better is just sometimes to see how their faces light up when they are in class. There's, um, there's something so special about it when they are happy and you can see them taking in knowledge and learning new things. It, it makes you feel happy inside. It makes you feel like you're making a difference in their lives. It's interesting because I, I think you you kind of have to make time for the things that are important to you. So currently I'm sleeping a little bit less than usual, but I'm balancing and we are really, uh, I'm giving my all and, and I'm happy with the process. You know, when you, when you sign up for it and you do the first audition, you already know that if you should maybe win, there's going to be expectations and there's going to be things that you have to be involved in. So you know what you sign up for <laughs> and you make time um, for the things that are special to you and the things that are important to you. Yes, so um, we started a while ago with national costume and um, with all the different dress rehearsals because this year, um, because it's a virtual event, a lot of the segments are filmed beforehand. So um, we had to do some green screen training and some voice training. And then um, what is wonderful also is that I really love exercise and I really love gym. So um, I've been exercising very hard as well <laughs> to make sure we, the heart is the most important to have a good heart, but you also want to look good on stage. So to have that combination <laughs> in preparation. Yeah. So the national costumes, we're not allowed to uh, show pictures yet, but what I can tell you about my costume is that the inspiration comes from the South African Hindabele tribe. So um, the cape is made out of uh, different layers of fabric that are all put together, and it's the message of unity and how we all come together. And the reason why we went, I have a bodysuit and then a cape with the bodysuit. And the reason we went with the cape is to also show that, um, you know, a cape includes everyone and it keeps everyone safe. And um, the reason for that is to say that there's always a safe space in our community and everyone is welcome. And that cape is big enough and wide enough to protect anyone that needs shelter. Wow. A great message. Very great Thank message. I, I can't wait to see this, this national costume. I love oh. already this costume. I love this I'll message. I love this history of this national costume. I'll definitely share a picture as soon as I have the green light. I'll send you the picture first. Ooh, um, the lowdown. <laughs> so that I can. Why, why do you choose this title? Because <laughs> then I can give information of everything that I've learned in my life and all the life lessons that I've learned from being low. 
I can hopefully share with the younger generation. Hmm, this is interesting. <laughs> I, I think the talk show, um, I'm very passionate about mental health and uh, mental health issues. And that's a lot of my campaign has centered around that. So I think my talk show um, would have to be expand your mind and um, how what we say and how we treat other people and how aware we are of other people's mental state um, can help us in life to also be a bit more empathetic and um, have a bit more of a heart for um, people around us and what the struggles they are facing. So expand uh, your mind. So I think I would love to play in a James Bond movie and my co-star would have to be Ben Affleck. I think oh, so. It's a great <laughs> actor. And I love James I love Bond. Yeah. In, a few, in a few weeks, we have the, the, next, the next movie of James Bond, the last of, yes. uh, of uh, Craig. Do you, love, yes. do you love Craig as a James Bond? Yeah. I do. Um, him and Piers Brosnan were my, my favorite Bond. They're my favorite Bond. I love to um, Charles Connery, the first James Bond of the oh, history. Yes. Yes. He's very smart. He's very class, British class. He is. He's classy and smooth. Yeah. And she's <laughs> the first James Bond for every, for history of James Bond and she yes. she launched the, the, the series of movie and I love this guy. I love this yeah. man. She's very, very class. And but Chris Bosman, it's a good James Bond. <laughs> I would hope that um, it would be a space where everyone is welcome and a planet where we start talking about taking care of the environment before it becomes catastrophic and we have to fix everything. I think the ideal planet, people would be more mindful of what they leave behind, um, not just the legacy they leave behind, but also the footprint and uh, how we treat each other. and. I hope there's more kindness in an alternate universe or in a different um, planet. I would hope for a lot more understanding and kindness um, to rule. It was my first pageant ever that I did. So, <laughs> why, did you, um, why did you choose to enter in this pageant? So um, I've been doing charity work for the past eight years. It really is my passion. And um, I have a lot of uh, community projects that I am involved in. And when I saw the advertisement for Mr. Gay World last year, November, um, I realized that this is such a wonderful platform to share the work I'm doing and to hopefully um, extend that work to a larger platform so that we can touch more lives and spread the message of inclusivity and diversity. So that was a small little advert on Facebook that I saw last year, November, that somehow came and uh, changed my life a little bit. <laughs> yeah, with lockdown, it is hard. So um, a lot of our uh, my charity work, I've got two charities that I focus on. One is called Future Steps, where uh, we raise funds to um, buy school shoes for children who don't have um, shoes or stationery for school, which is a big problem in South Africa because um, obviously um, we have a very large poverty rate on this side. So, um, so you, far- you, we... buy, you buy shoes to, for children to go to school? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and then supply all their stationery, so pens, paper, books um, for them so that they have things to write on and take notes in class. And so far, we've provided to more than a thousand uh, kids uh, in the year so far. So, oh. yeah, so I'm very excited about that. So that's the biggest one. 
And then my other charity is called Gate of Hope where uh, we raise uh, mental health awareness. So it's not a fundraising campaign. It's more um, about awareness for mental health issues. And uh, we put especially um, LGBT uh, teenagers in contact with licensed counselors and uh, psychologists and psychiatrists that help them through emotional trauma and um, the the idea is suicide prevention and to make sure that they know there's an alternative option and there's people who care for them and love them and that they don't have to consider suicide just because they don't feel welcome. It's difficult because our constitution is very progressive. So in terms of of laws, we are very protected and um, on paper at least we are very equal, but we find that um, in society, um, especially um, in our culture, um, it's still very frowned upon. It's people that still have a lot of misinformation about it and uh, people are not educated about what it means to be part of the LGBT community. So unfortunately, there's still a lot of stigmatization. Absolutely. So um, I really do hope to um, use my title and use the um, influence that we have to run educational programs and um, to just create a society that's more inclusive and more diverse, um, where people really feel welcome, regardless of where they find themselves within our alphabet, um, that they feel welcome and noticed and uh, that they know they have rights. It's interesting um, because it's, I think it's new terrain for all of us. It, it's scary, it's different, and you almost feel there's a little bit of a lack of connection because you don't have that brotherhood with your fellow candidates. But at least we got to see each other on Zoom and we have a group on Instagram where we can chat. So at least you know the other delegates and you know what they look like and sound like and we support each other's causes. Um, but I, I do feel it's a bit sad that we can't be together in person for that brotherhood. Ooh. <laughs> that is difficult. There have been um, such extraordinary uh, gentlemen over the years. And um, I think, so um, I, my favorite contestant um, over the years, I think I have to go with our uh, winner of 2012 that came from South Africa. And that was the last, <laughs> that was the last year uh, South Africa won um, <laughs> the Mr. Gay World title. So um, I really feel that that year um, South Africa um, represented so well um, in the international pageant. Um, so yeah, I think that was the, um, the ultimate for me and I hope I can um, I can follow in his footsteps it was uh, that oh it was it wasn't 2012 it was 2010 show for a bad oh, yeah okay. I, show I for a bad in 2010 that one it's a long time <laughs> but <laughs> you can it's work the you can and then yeah and then obviously uh, last yeah, well, 2019, when Francisco won uh, from Spain, I thought he was also just a great representative and candidate um, for his community. And he's done a lot of community work um, in a very difficult time with COVID and with lockdown. And um, I think he did wonderful campaigns, even though they were more social media driven and digitally driven, he still made the best of that reign. I would hope that my best asset would be my heart. I, I always say a lot of people can outwork me, they can be prettier, they can be smarter, but the one thing I have that no one else has is my big heart. And um, that passion for people, I, I think is something that sustains you much longer than any beauty competition ever will.
I think my message is the one that I've been uh, carrying with me from the South African round, and that is to really um, strive for inclusivity and education across all nations and um, especially to let men know and um, people who identify with the LGBT um, community that it is okay to have emotions and it is okay to be accepted and to just be yourself and to hopefully um, drive that message that who you are is enough. You don't have to be anything more, strive to be more straight or more butch or more this or that. You just have to be yourself and know that you are loved and welcomed and celebrated. Yeah, so I think the um, the biggest thing is that we um, have now currently supplied more than a thousand school shoes to uh, students across South Africa. And we also, um, we, uh, prolonged this program to Eswatini, who is one of the neighboring countries of South Africa. So we have expanded the program there. And the hope is to also expand this into the other African countries that are struggling with poverty. Um, and a lot of them like Namibia, who's a um, country so close to us, one of our border countries, and there, there are no LGBT rights. So um, we're also in talks uh, with their government at the moment to push for equality. And um, next year, there will be the first ever Mr. Gay Namibia um, that they will be hosting. So we're, I'm very excited about that to help with the legislation and um, the organizing of that pageant. And then, um, yeah, with our mental health campaign, it has been running for two years now. and. Over the two years, uh, we have seen such a dramatic decline in suicides within our own hometown and more and more people speaking out about mental health issues. So I think that in itself is uh, such a wonderful journey just to know that somehow you're making a small difference. Somebody want to support you for the choose for the, your platform about shoes. Have you a website, a Facebook? To yes. To send send me the send me and for the uh, for the viewer send the address of the website or Facebook. Perfect. So um, yeah, Facebook is just my name and my surname, 02. So Low Breitenbach, 02 is my uh, Facebook page. And there, my website is also just my name and surname, lowbreitenbach.com. So and there they can also see the links to the charities and what we're busy doing um, for Mr. Gay. The best memory was actually now very recently, we went to a school in Cape Town, it's called Elnor Primary, and I'll send you some pictures, but it was, it was so touching when some of the kids um, showed us the shoes that they do have, and the shoes don't have soles, they're broken, and the toes are sticking out, and to see their faces light up um, when they get that new pair of shoes, or some of the uh, third and fourth graders, it's the first time in their whole schooling that they're holding a pen. They never had a pen to write with. They always had to uh, write with a pencil that the teacher gives. So to the first time to write with ink, um, just to see how happy they are and how their faces light up. Um, I think that was the most touching experience of my life so far. I, I think the smile of the children is a it's a great memory. It's a great accomplishment for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it was a wonderful feeling. I think, um, especially in the education of the LGBT community, um, I grew up in a very conservative community. So I think my voice was an important one um, because I come from a religious background and because I come from a conservative background to also have that voice to say, but we are part of this LGBT community. It's not just always the loud and proud. Sometimes it's 
everyday people who um, just love life and um, who are, they are worthy of love. And um, to see how shops and uh, bakeries and everyone um, turn out to support you once they realize, oh, but wow, you're actually competing and you're part of this community to see how they support and um, how their mindset um, about the LGBTQ community changes. I think that um, that helps a lot to have that voice within the community to make um, the children feel safer um, and young adults or people who might still not be out um, to make them feel more included and more safe to come out when they are ready. <laughs> it's, it's difficult because I've never really seen myself um, you know, as beautiful necessarily. So, so what it is for me is it became a journey of self-love to learn how to love yourself and look in the mirror and go, you know what, maybe this isn't perfect, but it's what I have and it's who I am and to embrace that and learn to love that. So I think part of being um, a beauty king is to realize that beauty is not just on the outside. It's about what's inside and to see the beauty in other people, in every person that you meet. To We so often, we judge the book by the cover and we go, oh, you're too this, too that. Um, so I think to recognize the beauty in every person that you meet, that is special. Mm. I think you will find a lot of quotes. Um, all my pictures always have uh, <laughs> a lot of quotes because again, it's, you know, it's a pretty picture, but I think the message behind the picture is always important. So um, you'll find a lot of quotes and um, you'll also find a lot of um, fitness posts um, if in my stories of Instagram, um, because I feel that it's, um, it also, if, your body's strong, you are mentally stronger. So um, I think you'll find a lot of fitness posts and then um, a lot of fashion pictures because I love fashion and I love clothing. So you'll always see that I have a, um, always a nice suit or, <laughs> or there will be nice jackets, but a lot of fashion uh, inspiration. <laughs> and then are my you, charity work is also always on Facebook. <laughs> are you a fashion star? I wish I was. <laughs> I love fashion, but I wish I, <laughs> for me, it's just um, I dress for my personality. So, but I wish I was a fashion star. <laughs> I hope so. I hope other people um, can look at my social media or look at me as a person and feel that there's something more than just the outside and something that hopefully inspires them. Um, in my story, I did a documentary um, a year ago um, called uh, about my journey with mental health and acceptance. And I really hope that um, people can take away from that journey um, what it is to be yourself and to know that we face struggles, but there's a reason for every struggle you face in life. I am, I am. And um, it's wonderful for me to, to represent the country that I love so much. Um, we have 11 official languages. We are this mixing pot of culture. So for me, it fits in with the entire gay community who's a mixing pot of all wonderful, colorful people and different personalities. And um, it's wonderful to be able to share that message and the love I have for my country also with my fellow delegates. What do you most, what do you like the most in your country? The mountains in Cape Town, it is. You live beautiful. in Cape Town? You live I'm in, in Cape Johannesburg. Town. I stay in Johannesburg, but I travel to Cape Town often. I'm actually on the 23rd of this month, I'm going down to Cape Town again. It is 
just the most beautiful place in South Africa, those mountains. And uh, when the fog lies over the mountains, you can't compare that to anything. It's the most beautiful view and you just feel peaceful when you are there. My ultimate dream would be um, to build a community center in South Africa where um, there's part for education and there's a pride shelter for, um, for LGBTQ members that have been ousted by their family or aren't welcome in their family homes anymore to have a shelter. And then, um, yeah, to have a sustainable garden there for food growth. Um, as you know, in South Africa, we have a very uh, large poverty um, uh, line. So I would love to, at this uh, place, have food gardens and a community center where people can feel safe and welcome and know that they are celebrated and there's food and there's shelter and there's training facilities to teach them skills and to help them find their feet in the world. I think the biggest message and the biggest takeaway that I hope they will learn from me is to love louder. Wherever they are in life, whether it is family or friends or um, someone just struggling or a stranger that you meet in the shop or the person packing your groceries or working at the till or the petrol station, wherever you are, just love louder and be kinder. I think the world, the world can do with more love and more kindness.